thank you uh, uh bill and uh, thank you everybody for uh uh you know uh, sparing your time to listen to me uh, it is a great opportunity uh, for me to share some of my thoughts uh some of our work also uh, in this field and uh fairness in machine learning uh, algorithms is a very very uh, uh, I, I would say very hot topic in the sense that a lot of decisions uh, that affect our life are being made autonomously are being made by machine learning algorithms so uh, I, I think it is important for us to be aware of what is at stake so the way uh, I thought I will uh, uh, present my thoughts is to just introduce, uh, first give a motivation. Uh, by motivation, what I mean is some of the examples where fairness, or I would say unfairness in machine learning algorithms has seeped in historically. Uh, there are various newspaper reports and effects it affects us all. It affects people who are older as compared to people who are younger uh, because there might be perceived bias against age. So, uh, or there might be perceived bias against race. There might be perceived bias because of many things. So age, gender, uh, race, these are many issues. So I thought I will just give some, uh, some news items that have come into light and the community is very aware of, specifically the scientific community is very aware of these biases and what is being done or what can be done. So that comes into insights on why and some examples. And then how can we address these issues? And finally, I will conclude uh, my talk and will be open to questions. So uh, while I was looking at, uh, while I was preparing this uh, uh, presentation, just a few days back, three, four days back, I came across a news item on CNN. Uh, oh, can you see these slides? Yeah, so, sorry, I think I, I, somehow I was under, under the impression that I'm transitioning the slides. Yep. So uh, what I had mentioned was that some of the cases, and I'm kind of repeating what I said because that corresponded to this slide, and that relates to uh, bias, whether deliberate or unconscious bias, which exists among all of us and how we can overcome them. And that bias can be for various reasons, uh, very common forms of bias in my view are age. Uh, people who are older and people who are younger. So for example, many older people are not perceived uh, or, or may not be, uh, may not, may be discriminated against in job, in employment and so on. Then there are biases of race, then there are biases of gender and things like that. And uh, so uh, uh, I, I will give some examples of recent uh, news items on these biases and how we can address them. Uh, finally, I will, uh, uh, you know, give my views uh, 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 and then be open to question. Uh, by the way, just a caveat that my talk is purely technical talk. So it is not controversial in any way in the sense that what I'm, what I'm talking is how machines do that. So it is not why humans do that. And that may be a very different issue, whereas I'm concerned with how machines, for example, uh, you know, if Facebook is sending certain targeted ads or is hiding certain ads from certain groups of people, then why is it doing that? What is the technical reason behind it? Uh, so, so this item, uh, Bill, can you see this? Uh, uh, image of uh, where, yep. where it is falsely arrested for crimes, for crimes he did not commit. Yep. Yes. CNN. Yep. Right. So this was about three, four days back. Uh, I, I was just browsing through and I had heard of this news where an African-American man 
uh, was falsely arrested for a crime he did not commit. So there was a robbery and the person who had uh, committed the crime was using a fake ID. And you will see that these two, the, the police used the uh, uh, matching algorithm and they, they found the uh, fake ID on the scene of the crime and they, they used that fake ID to uh, do facial recognition and they found uh, uh, this gentleman, Najib, and they arrested him. And there is a, uh, I think if you just Google it or I can send you the link, uh, I can put the link in the chat uh, that you will see that there is a whole CNN article and it's very current, it's just three, four days back. And uh, so, and he, he spent about 11 days or 10 days in jail. So, uh, but, and I have taken the liberty of taking the right side also from CNN. And it says uh, that what we do not know that how many police departments are still using facial recognition uh, and what photos are being used to train facial re recognition algorithms and how often police use facial recognition uh, matches as the only evidence for arrest. Uh, I know that IBM, Amazon have stopped giving their facial recognition software to police. But it is not only the police, it is very day-to-day -day decisions, whether it is applying for a loan, whether it is applying for a job, whether it is applying for anything else, there are inherent or unconscious biases that have seeped into the algorithms and how do they affect us? So uh, on, in a Wall Street Journal, April 9th, 2021, there was a report about, uh, uh, you, you know, a, a report about the, un, the biases against men and women. And Facebook shows that men and women different job ads. Is it fair to show different job ads to men than to women? I don't know the answer for this right now because it may be a philosophical question and we will look at it. You know, on the surface of it, I, I would say, well, the jobs should be shown irrespective of the gender. Okay, well, then why would it be? It's a philosophical question and I will a little bit touch upon that. But what I'm going right now is why is it? Uh, a 2016 report by ProPublica found that the company allowed employees to exclude older workers from seeing job postings. So they, they basically they don't want older workers to come and work, they would prefer younger workers. And landlords to exclude ethnic, ethnic minorities from ads. Uh, the US Department of uh, so I, I took this picture, why old men don't get hired, uh, you know, why older women don't get hired and, and things like that. So these are existing biases that not the humans are making, the machines are making because all of these are autonomous. So the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development sued Facebook in 2019 over what it called biased ad targeting, alleging that the company was allowing landlords to exclude users with interests in topics such as Hispanic culture, mobility scooters. So mobility scooters will very likely be with people who are slightly advanced in age or, or, or things like that, or, and hijabs from apartment listings. And Facebook settled the lawsuit and said it has removed such categories as targeting options and pledged to work with Hood to address the agency's concerns. So these are some of the examples. So this was uh, in the March 2021 issue. It's a computer science journal. And the article was, can the biases in facial recognition be fixed? 
So the question is, can we fix that? And should we fix them? Is it moral to fix them? So these are open questions and I'm I will try to answer some of these questions. Uh, for example, uh, I, I took this picture, which you see on the right, and it gives a quick view of how facial recognition is done. This is a form of geometric matching where the distance between the eyes, the length of the uh, face, the uh, length of the lips, the uh, and color, etc., are used to match. So they are geometrically matched, uh, but it's much sophisticated than this. Uh, I took a series of articles which have come in recently, and uh, Bill, I'll be happy to share my PowerPoint with you so you can share with the audience. Uh, in case any of you would want to go and read a little bit more on this, especially for example, Microsoft facial recognition uh, and uh, the tests to do whether there is a bias or not and things like that. Uh, th this is something uh, facial recognition got him arrested for a crime he didn't commit, uh, wrongfully accused by an algorithm. This was in New York Times, June 24, 2020. So it, it is different than what uh, I mentioned. So there are a lot of cases like that. But the more problematic, in my view, are the cases where we do not know that we are being discriminated against. And the decisions are made and something we don't get. And the reason might be that the machine learning has made a decision. So, but the irony is that the decisions are and will continue to be made by algorithms. The technology is so advancing, whether we want to, we want, we want, we, we go on Amazon, whether we apply for loan, anything which we do remotely, the algorithms are making decisions. For example, machine learning is used in court systems to assess the probability that a defendant will recommit a crime. So it could be human judgment that, well, this person is very likely to commit a crime or the machine learning or machine will decide, and this is applicable in court. Childhood welfare systems, autonomous vehicles, employment matching, search, and advertisement place, placement algorithms and housing. These are some very small examples of where the algorithms or machine learning are making these decisions, whether it is gender uh, matching, whether it's, it is older people or versus younger people. That means whether it, it is age-based discrimination, whether it is gender-based discrimination, uh, well, uh, let me not use the word discrimination. What I'm saying is the decision and whether the age affects a decision, whether a gender affects a decision, whether a matching affects a decision, all of these decisions are being used by algorithms. But underlying all algorithms are humans. Humans are the ones who have made these algorithms. So these are some of the, for example, COMPASS, which stands for, it's a software package, Correctional Offender Management Profiling for Alternate Sanctions. It is court admissible, as far as I know, and it gives the judge, uh, uh, it, it gives the measures, the risk of a person to commit, recommit another crime. And judges use COMPASS to decide whether to release an offender or to keep him or her in person. And an investigation by, computer, by scientists found that this software has a bias against African-Americans. So I don't know whether the compass is still being used and, or whether it has been discontinued. Again, AI systems that judge beauty pageant winners are biased against darker skinned contestants. 
the digital cameras over predicts Asians as blinking. So, and this is not the only software. I think I had listed a couple of other software and it might be in another slide. So there are a collection of softwares about software packages, about 15, 20 software packages that I could find in addition to Amazon, in addition to Facebook, in addition to Twitter that use these algorithms to target ads. So what might be sources of unfairness in machine learning systems? I thought of three, those arising from bias in data, because it's the humans who have fed the data. It's the humans who have built the algorithm. So maybe the data we give is biased. And I, I will discuss a little bit more. Those that arise from bias in algorithms, algorithms themselves are biased. And those involving interpretation, that means if a judge, if a Compass software package is telling the judge that this person is more likely to commit recommit a crime, then the human, the judge, needs to make a decision, keeping in view this is that this is a machine recommended uh, 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 advice. So, before we do that, let me define in my let me define what is fair. What do we mean by that? This is fair. So fairness, this is only one definition. Fairness is the absence of any prejudice or favoritism toward an individual or towards an individual or a group based on their inherent or acquired characteristics. But I can tell you that this definition also fails. And I will show why because of equity and equality. The difference between equity and equality can be a big issue. And I will touch a little bit upon uh, that issue. So, uh, and that can happen because an unfair algorithm is skewed toward a particular group of people. And there are many more, uh, many, many more definitions, including quality and equity. And we will touch very soon on those issues. So, what type of biases can exist? Existing biases that can seep into data even with good sampling and feature selection. For example, 2018 image search for women CEOs result in fewer female CEOs because only 5% of Fortune CEOs were women. So that means historically, there are less women who are CEOs and if the algorithm learns from the historical data, it will make the decision that there are, uh, you, you know, if you have to assign a woman CEO, it will give very less probability, very less chance to women because historically there have been very few women. So the machine will learn that and make the decision accordingly. Another example, uh, what is what we call is a representation bias that if we just take the samples and train a machine learning algorithm, and a specific example is the ImageNet, this database is biased towards Western countries. And that again, historically, the Western countries have been technologically very advanced. So the, image, the scientists who work in Western countries take the images of more Western nations, typically, Western European and America or North America. So the idea is that the majority has a higher representation than the, uh, the minority, but one solution is that can we make that equal? But we have to be aware of this. So ImageNet database is very, yeah, is there a, is there a question? I don't believe so, no. Okay. So uh, similarly, a measurement bias, for example, the Compass software, the prior arrests and friend and friendly arrests are used as a proxy variable to measure the level of riskiness. And historically, uh, maybe African-Americans has a higher 
in terms of the total po percentage of population, maybe there are more arrests. So the algorithm will give higher likelihood to people who are from minority group. So there are, uh, in the literature, I mean, the technical part, there are a lot of other definitions. And I have just put in three or four of why the biases may come. Uh, I brought in this slide only maybe slightly technical, but I will just very quickly go to see how the actual algorithm works. And this is the only slide bill, which is slightly technical, but you know, I, I did want to bring this in. And the idea was to explain, there's a particular machine learning algorithm called naive Bayes, and it is based on Bayes theorem. And it's the probability of an event is dependent on the prior probability, and this is the formula. So I took an example. And I said, okay, what is the probability of getting loan for buying a house given you are a woman? So probability of getting loan given woman, according to this formula, is probability of women who have already got loan, probability of getting loan, and probability of being women. And if you look at these tables, this gives you the distribution of high income males, 3,256, and high income females, 590. Low income males, 7604. Low income females, 4831. And you can see this same thing is represented. So obviously, it will favor high income males because they are more. So their probability of getting selected is much higher. And that will be represented in the algorithm. So I brought in a, a YouTube video, and again, the facial recognition is everywhere. Whether you are aware of it or not, the cameras everywhere. Here, this uh, this YouTube video shows this gentleman uh, without his knowledge, his face is taken and then mashed against the profiles. Uh, so how can we address the bias? Maybe we should balance the data. For example, if we have in our database, there are more women who are in higher income group and more less women who are in higher income group and more men who are in higher income group. But when the machine learning system is making the decisions, they should give equal representation to both men and women. So that means they should strip away data and balance it. And that was, uh, and so we should have representation from each group. And there is a good amount of work which is being done to make the algorithms themselves fair. So one is fairness in data, one is representation of each group, equity, equal representation from each group and algorithmic fairness. So I, some of these tools, uh, I think this slide was supposed to be uh, before, but these are the software packages that are making, ensuring that the software or the, the algorithms are fair. That means the community, the research community is working on making the algorithms fair. And Equitas, it assesses the amount of fairness in a tool or system. AI Fairness 360, this is a, uh, by IBM, International Business Machines. They have come up with a toolkit which sees whether a given algorithm is fair or not. And it also creates benchmarks for fairness algorithms to be evaluated. Savory is again a tool used in risk assessment frameworks that includes human intervention, automatic machine learning methods, to see which one is more accurate and fair. And conducting these type of studies should be done more frequently, but prior to releasing the tools in order to avoid doing harm. Uh, I have listed some data sets that are available in the community that measure, given an algorithm, how fair it is. Uh, for example, University of California in Vines adult data set, German credit data set, pilot parliaments, benchmark data set, and so on, Compass data set. And Compass to me is very crucial because if a judge is making a decision 
And judge is depending on compass, then we better make sure that the there is fairness. So what are the challenges? First is, what do we mean by fairness? And then there is a question of equality and equity. So if you look at the figure uh, picture on the right side, and there is a game suppose going on, uh, you can assume a football game or, or soccer or any other thing, and we have three individuals. This tiny guy, if we give equal resources, height, then these two people can see it, but this tiny guy cannot see, it. but we have given equal resources to everybody. But equity would be that we give higher resources to this tiny guy and a little less resources to this person in between. And this person is tall enough to be able to see. So all three can see. So equality is where we give equal resources to everybody. But equality, in my view, may not work because somebody is already weak. It's like a mother and mother I have heard, I mean, I had a mother, I come from a big family. We were six, three brothers, three sisters. And I have seen generally mother or father, they would kind of favor somebody who is a little low, who's a little weak. They'll give, you know, and somebody who's doing well. So it is not that they would treat everybody same they would say, okay, this child is suffering, so let me be more nice to this child. The similar concept that you have equality and this guy does not have the privilege of being tall, so you give them more resources so that they can see, they can watch the game. So the question of is equality fairness or equity fairness? So equality is each group is given the same amount. Equity, each group is given the resources they need to succeed. And third thing we should look for in challenging is that a lot of these works, a lot of these issues are unconscious in our mind. And unconsciously, they seep into data. Unconsciously, they seep into algorithms. This is human nature. So we as scientists as an, and as an individuals, we should have search specifically for unfairness. So in my view, we want a society which is not only equal, but also equitable. So if, for example, if I cannot walk, if I cannot drive to a grocery store, but I need groceries, and I would say, okay, well, I will give everybody a car. But the problem is I cannot even drive. In that event, equity would be that somebody will drive me to the grocery store rather than just giving a car to everybody. So I think we should, we want a society which is not only equal, but also equitable. I think I will stop here about 30 minutes, uh, 30, 35 minutes is the talk. And what I have covered right now in today's talk is some examples of unfairness or machine learning bias. And the bias can exist in algorithms. It can exist in data. I gave a small definition of what is fairness and how some examples or algorithms of bias, including from Facebook, targeted ads, and bias can be based on age, based on gender, based on race, and any other factors. But these are the most common ones. And how, how they are existing right now, what are the software packages, and how perhaps we can overcome these.